Greetings and welcome once again to Music and Meditation with Pastor Fred and Sharon Moore. And thank you, Sharon, for that beautiful song, It Took a Miracle. Listen to these words of Scripture. Hebrews 2, 4. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Acts 19.11 And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. John 12.37 But even though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed him not. John 6.2 And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. In Acts 6, 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. In the words of my mouth, in the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Even though this may not be the day on your calendar, I like to remember these days some of the, those um, great military miracles. Let us consider the, the miracle of Dunkirk, 1940. British troops retreated through France under fire from an advancing German army. A massive evacuation was launched to bring the soldiers safely home to Britain. And between May the 6th and the 4th of June, 1940, there was a mammoth, a 338,000 troops rescued from Dunkirk. The Dunkirk evacuation. They called it Operation Dynamo, also known as the Miracle of Dunwork, Dun Dunkirk. We may have seen the movie Dunkirk. Christopher Nolan directed that powerful tribute to this real-life World War II drama that unfolded over 10 days in 1940 on the shores of France. But there's more to the story than was shown on the screen. See, for Winston Churchill, the new British Prime Minister, it all began with an early phone call on May the 15th that roused him from sleep. And the French Premier called, said, um, we've been defeated, we're beaten. Churchill was well aware of the Nazi advance. Days earlier, Hitler's army had taken Holland, Belgium, and Luxembourg, and Denmark, Denmark and Norway already in his grip. England sent more than 200,000 troops to France and Belgium, all for nothing, now it seemed. Churchill said, surely it can't have happened so soon. The front is broken, he was told. The German forces are pouring through in great numbers. And the British and French troops, they found themselves surrounded in dis disarray. Their only possible escape was across the English Channel. A mass evacuation would require, oh, funneling thousands upon thousands of soldiers spread across miles into one space while the Germans closed in with 1,800 tanks and 300 Stuka dive bombers. Mm. For days, Churchill resisted this escape plan. It seemed like a suicide mission. They'd be lucky to get 20,000 men home via the English Channel, let alone more than 300,000 Allies troops. But there was no other option. 
So on May the 23rd, Churchill met with the British monarch, King George VI, to brief him. And through a naval rescue operation, there were just a few ships, but they were ready to sail. The logistics of defending against the inevitable German attack. Well, it was, seemed like the ferrying process would be impossible. King George VI, he said, we must pray. And this Sunday, next Sunday, I'm calling for a national day of prayer. Churchill was not looking at prayer for the answer, but he could hardly refuse the king. So on May 24th, King George VI, he had addressed the nation, let us with one heart and soul, humbly but confidently, commit our cause to God and ask his aid that we may valiantly defend the right as it is given to us to see it. Hmm. Something happened that historians, even all these years later, cannot explain. With German tanks rumbling just 10 miles from Dunkirk, Hitler did the unthinkable. On May the 24th, the day George V called the nation to pray, Hitler inex inexplicably halted his offensive for nearly three days. As England knelt as one, those tanks remained in, grounded. Nothing moved. It was the exact window of time the British needed to form an extensive perimeter to temporarily fight back the Germans and establish a funnel for their troops to flow back to England on the English Channel. Meanwhile, word was spreading across England of the need for boats to cross the Channel to Dunkirk. For what purpose? No one was exactly sure, but almost any vessel would do. There were rowboats, fishing trawlers, tugs, motorboats, hundreds of would-be skippers. They responded to the call to this emergency. Yes. Some had never been out of sight of land before. Many lacked the crafts and lacked compasses. None of them were armed. The English Channel is notoriously rough, choppy, no place for seamen who had never been to sea before. But once again, something peculiar happened. The water encountered was like that of a bat bathtub. It quieted down, barely a ripple to disturb the journey. No one had ever seen anything like it. There were so many boats that in places the waters looked like a freeway during rush hour. In the first five days of that rescue mission, more than 100,000 soldiers were evacuated. Think about it. But that still left more than 200,000 men, 10,000s, desperately fighting to hold the perimeter. They had to go, but they would be last. Bradley never forgot the hero's welcome he received when he at last reached the shores of England. The crowds of people waving, cheering. This is England, he thought. You're worth fighting for. Hilton and Shaw would remember the cheers that greeted them, exhausted. They and the other crew members somehow managed to get those 338,000 soldiers to land. And they gave thanks for those 850 little ships. A miracle. There seems no other word to describe it. Then there was the Battle of the Bulge. 
the Battle of the Bulge, known as the Ardennes Counteroffensive. And that was a major German campaign on the Western Front, December 16th, 1944, to the January the 25th, 1945. Yes. Now, during the Battle of the Bulge, 20,876 Allied soldiers were killed and another 42,893 were wounded and 23,554 were captured or missing. German losses numbered 15,652. Defeated in this campaign, Germany lost its offensive capability in the West. In World War II, the veterans from nearby Plant City, well, he, there they, they said it wasn't the generals that got them through the Battle of the Bulge. If God hadn't been watching over me, I'd never made it. That's a 97-year-old man said that, James Money. And he added a few close calls during that massive German offensive that made him believe in miracles. During the Battle of the Bulge, that mission was to fight through Nazi heavy armor and infantry to relieve that besieged 101st Airborne who were still holding Bastogne. Hmm. Well, in the frigid cold of a winter battle, there was success. A boy from Plant City named Fred Miller, he said, Hold your fire. I know that man. That's why I say miracles are still happening. Indiscriminate artillery shells kept Mooney guessing. But he claims he was never afraid. He saw combat. That's what I was over there for. And today, Moni believes it's a miracle that he still represents a group of soldiers who are nearly gone and vanishing. I thank God that he was watching over me and brought me back. That's Fred. Miller's article of the Battle of the Bulge. There are just two miracles of that World War II. And then there are the miracles recorded in Scripture. There are so many miracles in the Bible that some are taken for granted because they are just not fully highlighted. However, there are those 83 miracles recorded in the Old Testament and more than 80 found in the New Testament. Here are some of those miracles. In Genesis, the creation in Genesis chapter 1, the flood, Genesis chapter 7, the confusion of tongues at Babel, Genesis 11, the Sodomites blinded, Genesis 19, cities of Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed, Genesis 19. Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt. Hmm. Genesis 19. God speaking as a human voice. Numbers 22. That burning bush. Remember that story? Exodus chapter 3. Moses' rod changed into a serpent in Exodus 4, that pillar of cloud in Exodus 13, crossing the Red Sea, Exodus 14, manna sent, Exodus 16, and the fall of Jericho, Joshua 6. Preservation of Jonah in the belly of that with fish, that whale. For three days he survived. Oh, there are some miracles recorded also in the New Testament. The water made wine in Cana, John 2nd chapter. Catches a fish in Lake Galilee, Luke 5. Tempest stilled in Lake Galilee, Matthew 8. 
a blind man healed in Mark 8, 10 lepers cleansed in Luke 17, Lazarus raised from the dead, John 11, resurrection of Christ, Luke 24, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Acts 2. And then there's Christ's appearance to Paul at his conversion, Acts 9. The greatest miracle of all, though, is the salvation offered to each of us through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And it's something we can accept or reject. Salvation, accept it or reject it. And Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, never stops calling us to him. Mm -hmm. Calling us to have that conversation with him. Just like that thief on the cross saying, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus simply says, Thou day, thou, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. We all need to have that conversation with Jesus and it is available to each of us. It is indeed a miracle. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you and God bless you. Amen.